everyone, Mark Goldbiner, TigerFitness.com CEO, MTS Nutrition. On my Facebook fan page, Facebook.com slash Mark Lobliner, I answer your questions. That's right, you ask them, and of course, if I answer your question, I send you a free tub of MTS Whey. This one comes from Angel Rosario. A lot of people see bodybuilding and functional fitness as two completely separate categories. How can or what is your opinion on how someone can merge the two and become more functional while building the body they desire? <clears throat> Angel, here's the deal. If you are aiming to be an IFBB pro, if you're aiming to be a best of the best bodybuilder, if you're gain, aiming to gain as much lean mass as possible, for most people, for most, building more muscle, creating more tissue, more tension, muscle is contractile, more tension, it will inevitably lead to being inflexible. However, you have your anomalies, you have your Kai Greens, you have your Flex Wheeler who did splits on the stage. There are certain genetic variables and certain training methodologies which will, which will lead to less of a chance of you losing flexibility. However, I would pretty much venture to guess that Kai Green's probably not going to be running a marathon or probably running fast anytime soon, as is Flex Wheeler. That's a body weight situation. Okay, his legs are so massive and muscular, it'd be hard to really run. However, Kai is so athletic, I wouldn't put it past him. In fact, Kevin Lavroni, as he was competing in the Mr. Olympia, actually challenged a Olympic sprinter to a race, and while he didn't win, he did very, very well. He was a very, very fast individual. Genetics trump all, but a lot of people lose sight of a lot of things. One is that Kevin Lavroni, Kai Green, and Flex Wheeler are genetically gifted elite athletes, and you're probably not. Number two is that these guys spend their life training. Outside of Ronnie Coleman, who was a full-time cop, and outside of a couple others, these guys literally are fit for life. And Kevin Lavroni, with the exception, played in his band a lot of the year, full-blown, back when he was competing. Flex Wheeler was a bodybuilder, full-time. They have more time to pay attention to flexibility routines, to stretching. Us, schlubs like me and you, you and I, sorry for the improper English, we go to the gym, we have about an hour or two to get what we can done, and then we got to go home and tend to our lives, okay? We don't have time to spend all that time stretching and doing all that. We have to choose hypertrophy, cardio, and stretching, and sometimes it just doesn't match up. However, there's also one thing that you also need to realize. You're probably not gonna be as big as Kevin Lavroni, Kai Green, Phil Heath, or any of the aforementioned bodybuilders who might have trouble with flexibility, or who have bucked that trend and have flexibility. At best, it, even if you're enhanced, you might get up to about 215, 220, and even that, that, that's not going to be as muscular as those guys because chances are you're regular. You're like me. You're a guy who's maximizing what God gave him and God did not give you what he gave those guys. So <clears throat> functionality, in my opinion, almost, I hate to say this, as a CrossFit Level 1 certified instructor, they want to develop a completely functional athlete. The goal of CrossFit is to have an astounding average athlete. Let me explain. CrossFit games are won by the elite CrossFitters. They're elite at being pretty good at everything. Um, for example, in the actual CrossFit course, they referenced Eddie Hall being a great deadlifter. Then the instructor asked, not in this voice, can he run a 5K? No, he can't run a fucking 5K. But he can deadlift a thousand pounds, jackass. At the end of the day, specialists do what specialists do. I'm not going to ask, for example, a famous Olympic sprinter, I'm not going to name names, was at Exos. They didn't even think about it twice. He was running out the treadmill. He's a linear runner. He runs forward. That's what he does. He's a sprinter. Nonchalantly, the trainer, who's one of the greatest in the world, tells him, all right, do some lateral shuffles on the treadmill. He fell. He was so specialized at running forward that he couldn't run laterally. What I'm saying is don't forget the other things as you're building hypertrophy. That's why, as I'm gonna link down below my 12-week functional trainer, I factor in those things through weight training that does engage functional lifts. 
For example, I like starting out with unilateral movements to make sure that you're balanced. It evens out your uneven areas, so to speak. Okay, that's one thing. Another thing is pillar prep. I am huge on pillar prep. What is pillar prep? It's before you work out doing things like seven way hip, doing things like foam rolling, doing things like mini bands to get the hips ready, doing things like, like, um, like, like dynamic back warm ups, doing things like the world's greatest stretch like inchworms for your lower back and your hamstrings. Those are not static stretching. I'm not telling you to sit there and reach over and touch your toes and do this and hip hop parade, ho, oh, none of that shit. What I'm saying is through your training, you wanna incorporate different things. Here's how I recommend you set up your training program so that you do incorporate those kind of movements. Now, this is not a must do. This is just what I recommend when setting up how to set up a functional and a hypertrophy specific training program. Number one is you want some form of pillar and movement prep. I would like to see people start by warming up their hips. No matter what, start with the hips, okay? Um, with that, you do either something called the seven way hip. You could search seven way hip low liner on YouTube, or you can rock out something called mini band work, lateral and linear. Again, type in mini band low liner, it'll come up. After that, I like to see people do a lower back dynamic stretch. Dorian used to do these. You could do pivotal hip rotations. You could do torso rotations, any rotary torso movement to really engage that back and that core. Next, I'd like you to see world's greatest stretch, six per leg. World's Greatest Stretch, again, search the name World's Greatest Stretch and Low Liner. After that, Inchworm, again, search the name Inchworm Low Liner. After that, I like to do movement prep. For example, if I'm doing something like chest, I like to do some, tri you know, if I'm doing bench press, I like to work the triceps and the lats before I hit the chest really hard to make sure that all the ancillary antagonistic muscles are engaged. After that, what I like to do is I like to do a, a basically a bread and butter movement either a bench press or a press in general, a chest press in general with dumbbells, a squat, a deadlift, or an overhead press. After that, I like to move to unilateral movements that will engage different sides of the body that will make sure my balance is on point and my imbalances, um, not just from a bodybuilder aesthetic standpoint, but from a functionality standpoint are addressed after that, you can move on to isolation. For cardiovascular performance, again, we're fitting this in for the average individual who only has one to two hours a day to spend in the gym total. At the end, I like to finish with Tabata. I do it on the bike. Tabata, if you type in Tabata low liner on Google, articles galore on that I've written. Tabata is a two to one work to rest ratio. For example, you start, you do 20 seconds work, as hard as you can go, literally try to induce vomiting on the, on the stationary bike, and then 10 seconds rest. You lower the rate, lower the speed, lower the resistance, you're good to go. 20 hard, 10 soft. 20 hard, 10 soft. Do that for eight rounds, eight total rounds. That will take you four total minutes. In and out of the gym, the program I just described should not take you much more than 60 to 90 minutes total to perform. That is how you combine the two. So it is possible to combine function and performance and aesthetics. However, you just have to be smart about it. And I'm also taking into account that you probably don't have 12 hours a day to dedicate to pillar prep, to foam rolling, to massage, to this, to that, nor do you have the budget. What I outlined should help you greatly. Let me know your thoughts. Again, click on the link down below for my 12 week trainer. If you have any further questions, again, facebook.com slash Mark Ask away. And that's not a game. Ooh, ooh, ooh.